My name is Jillian and welcome to Good Witch Knits. This is a vlog style podcast coming to you from Sacramento, California, where I chat about all the things that I have been making. Mostly knitting, but also some sewing, dyeing, weaving, and spinning. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to chat about these things with me. I can be found elsewhere on the internet, mostly on Instagram. Handle Good Witch Knits. I am also on Ravelry. Welcome back to returning viewers, and if this is your first time checking out my podcast or a podcast like this, it's essentially crafty show and tell. I will show off things that I've made recently and show things that I'm working on, and you get to follow along with my progress. All right, let's get started with what I am wearing. I am wearing a me made item, one of my most beloved toasty sweaters that I get to wear now because it has dipped slightly below the 70s here in Sacramento, and for us, that is sweater weather. So this is my highly modified contrast sweater. It is a pattern designed by Petit Knits, and in her design, uh, she has a contrast color at the cuffs and then in the body. We'll awkwardly stand up so you can see what I did instead. I cropped the sweater, and instead of doing a contrast in different color, I just used a different texture of knitting pattern. So I did a really extended ribbing up my arm and up the body of the sweater. I also modified the gauge, which is why this is pretty modified. Um, the yarns that I used, this was the first time that I held silk mohair with wool and knit it up, and it is a dream. The two yarns that I used, one is Beaches and Bouches, I'm saying it wrong, someone told me how to say it at Stitches last year. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I knitted in the gross lamb's wool, so that's the thicker lamb's wool. I picked it up at Shop La Mercerie. The other yarn that I held with it is uh, Earl Grey Fiber um, and, oh gosh, what's the color called? When Doves Cry. So these two together are super dreamy and I'm very excited I get to wear this sweater again. I have been very busy crafting away. And one of the things I've been working on, which is very unusual for me, is a gift net. So, hee hee, these are <laughs> the cutest things I've made in a while. I think I mentioned in my last podcast that my niece and nephew, they live in Florida, but they are visiting Minnesota for Thanksgiving. And I asked them to please let me knit them some things, so I knit them some toasty wool socks. Um, this one I cast on 40 stitches and I did a 2 by 2 rib, heel flap and gusset, and then I knit it to be 5 inches long because my uh, mother-in-law measured the kids' feet for me so they'll hopefully fit. That's also why I did a ribbing so that it could stretch, could like stretch a whole lot if needed. Isn't it hard to get socks on kids? Don't they always fall off? I've heard this. I don't I don't have a lot of experience putting socks on kids, but I thought an all-over ribbing would allow more flexibility and maybe even let them wear the socks for a little bit longer. For this larger pair, it is knit six inches long and I cast on 48. The other difference is I used a size zero needle for these. The yarn I used, uh, so this is Valkyrie Fibers. I hope it's focusing in her Victorian Christmas colorway. I love it. I am planning on knitting just a larger size of this for myself. I have enough of the yarn left. And then, oh my gosh, these socks. These are Mondine by Retrosaria, that Portuguese company, non-superwash wool, so I don't know how well they'll last. I think they're kind of a machine wash family, but they're really only gonna wear these one or two times when they go to the cold weather because otherwise in Miami it's so hot. Maybe he'll wear them around the house. Um, I think their colors, they don't have names, they just have numbers. The reason I chose this yarn is because this is for my nephew whose favorite color is yellow. I don't know if it's showing up, but there are little flecks of yellow in there. There's also some beautiful white, blue, and gray, but his favorite color is represented in there. Yeah, 
so I'm someone who knits gifts for people now. Knitting these was really fun because they just fly off the needles. I think I did this in one weekend and this in another. Oh, and I knit these on a size 2 needle. I have knit socks. I have not knit socks on a size 2 needle, I think, until I first knit my first pair of socks, and they go so fast. Why do I knit my socks again on a size 0 needle? I say I like the fabric, but I think I might knit another pair for myself on a size 2 and see how those wear and how I like them. Because this uh, knits so fast. I use my Chiagu interchangeables. And I really enjoyed it. So I might have more needle size 2 socks in my future. Alright, I'm recording this podcast now because these need to go in the mail in order to get to Miami in time for the kids to wear them on their trip to cold weather. Done with those. Moving along, that's my only finished object for this week, but I do have some works in progress. One of which you've seen, and one of which is a new cast on. I know I said I was going to just work through my works in progress before casting anything else on, but I was having a really crappy day, and I just needed to cast something new on. Let's start with what you've seen before, because it's coming along lovely. I don't think I had a body yet when I last checked in. I hope I didn't. This is my earthen cardigan from issue 29 of Pom Pom. It's a pattern by Amy Christoffers. Did I say Amy Christofferson last time? I'm sorry, Amy. Also, I don't know you. Maybe not on a first name basis, but uh, I'm really sorry I mispronounced your last name. So I finished the body. This is knit out of Luma. It's a yarn by the Fiber Company, which is a cotton, silk, linen, wool blend. It is so luscious. Uh, the color is shadow. It's kind of a purpley muted black gray it's the only color really in that yarn i love the yarn but it doesn't take color very well it's really the only one that i like i'm intrigued how this will look different once i block it out it's gonna look gorgeous and i've started let me reach here oh, we're gonna have vacuuming i'm just gonna talk through it <laughs> hopefully you can't hear it i've started the sleeve all the joys of having upstairs neighbors. We're gonna pause for one second. And after a very short break, which won't seem like a break at all to you because of the magic of editing, we are back. Hopefully vacuuming is done. The joys of living in an apartment. I think I was just showing off my sleeve, showing you that I've started the sleeve. Just one. Uh, it carries the interesting lace pattern up the side of the sleeve. It's great. Uh, if you're considering casting on a DK weight sweater pattern, I really encourage you to check out this one. Written in a very clear manner. Okay, so that is my first work in progress that you've already seen. And I'm not going to say I was bad because sometimes you just need to cast on a new project. And this yarn I've been in my stash for a bit, wanting to be something. Oh, I've made a bit of progress on it. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> so this yarn is Regatta. It is a cotton tape yarn by Barocco. Oh, and it is comes in a pre-wrapped cake, so it's a, kind of exploding. Um, it has a really interesting structure to it. It almost seems like... I mean, it's a tape yarn, so that's kind of like fabric that's been cut. It's not quite marled. I don't know how you would describe this, but it's um, black and white. 100% cotton. But the tape, when people knit with it, they found that it doesn't uh, stretch in the same way that when you knit with other cotton, the way it stretches. And this pattern is a pattern I've wanted to make for a while. It is the Agnes sweater, which is a pattern for a bulky weight yarn that Quince and Company put out like four or five years ago. I've wanted to make this for a while. I'm making some modifications to it. So it calls for 
pockets, and I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm omitting the pockets. I went through quite a few Ravelry projects for this pattern, and it seemed pretty unanimous that the pockets added a lot of bulk. And in the situations in which I see myself wearing this sweater, I'm going to be wearing it more as a top. It's 100% cotton. It's not really going to be a sweater for warmth so much. Um, I don't see myself needing to put my hands in pockets as much as I love putting my hands in pockets for just comfort. I'm not going to be needing to do it for warmth. Um, and so far, I think that's the only modification I've made on it. Uh, yeah, very simple knit. Right now I'm just knitting, stocking it. Oh, I have started the bottom ribbing, and I do plan on doing a bit of an extended ribbing at the bottom, just because I think it's so flattering the way I did it on this one. Yeah. What else do I have to say about this? Oh, yeah. So I don't plan on leaving this yarn this color. I think it would look really interesting to dye this sort of marled fabric. But I cannot decide what to dye it. So the black will stay dark, but the white will take on a color. I'm thinking maybe um, eucalyptus to get kind of a gold. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> um, maybe matter would be cool with it. Indigo would be beautiful with it, but I haven't really dyed with indigo yet. Maybe this will be the first. I don't know. We'll see. If you have any opinions on what I should dye this with, let me know. Leave your comments down below. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out what project I'm gonna take with me to Philly. Can't remember if I said this yet, um, but I am going to be in Philadelphia visiting my sister-in-law for Thanksgiving next week. So yeah, priorities are obviously figuring out which knitting projects I'm gonna bring with me, right? Um, I think those are all the projects that I wanna talk with you about this week. Um, I do have what I suppose is a nearly finished object, more of a whip because I still need to wash them, but okay, let's back up. Eric and I went to the Fiber Shed Wool Symposium and Market this past weekend at Point Ray Station at the Dance Palace, um, and it was great. I wish I was able to stay for the lectures before and after this like symposium where I got to meet lots of cool farmers and do some live demos, but next year, next year. I actually bumped into a fellow Rumpelstiltskin employee there, which was super fun, Erin, who keeps Angora bunnies and actually has her own yarn company, Bungalow Farms, which is a cooperative of people with Angora rabbits. They get their yarn spun. We sell it at Rumpelstiltskin if you're interested in something super local here in the Sacramento area. Uh, but one of the demonstrations that was there was natural dyeing, so I definitely had to hit up that booth. Um, Grace Harris was the artist leading this activity, um, and we naturally dyed these cotton napkins. Um, I plan on finishing the edges of them, and what we dyed them with is hibiscus, and bay berry root, I believe. Yeah. This is just dried. I still need to clean it, but I really like the way that I took. So I did two and Eric did two of them. We made a little matching set of naturally dyed napkins, which is fun. All right, that's all my ramblings for this week. Uh, as always, say hi in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this podcast at all, go ahead and give it a like. It helps more people find this little knitting crafty community. Um, until next time, take care. Bye.